Hi, this is James Gardner, the Senior Tech Geek, and in this video, I'm doing more about my REC 2020 um, panel or uh, presentation. And in this topic of the presentation that we discussed is when do we want to use REC 2020 and when is REC 2020 not really required? This is obviously something that we need to take on board. The basic example of this would be if you're doing a talking head uh, documentary, there's really no real need to go to Rec 2020. There's actually no real need to go to P3 to, to a degree and just doing a, a 709 finish to a P3 for a cinema release is a very common way to go. Now, with um, Rec 2020 and the requirement for high, high dynamic range um, 4K, that's probably something we'd probably, t probably take advantage of as well. You may want to go down the path of only going to a P3 grade uh, at 4K, even at 2K, doing a 2K to 4K blow up and putting the P3 into a 2020 container and building your deliverable that way. That's very possible and then why not if it makes sense for your, your content and the production that you need to produce. So this is an interesting topic because this is uh, a path where we need to figure out what the best, best, best path is to make the production the most you know, economical it can be to ensure that creative intent actually makes it to the screen or makes it to the deliverable. Because these can cost a lot of money and you know, we need to understand the paths and how much they cost and what they bring to the actual deliverable to make a good, educated and um, informed decision on when to use it and when not to use it. So I want to give some more examples. An example of um, a technology that we use uh, you know, that takes advantage of a technology or may not is, for example, is 3D. Currently, 3D is dropped in popularity because we've realized that it really works for specific content. Like Avatar was fantastic. It, it was a surreal world and the 3D really stood out and was a totally new experience. And we'll most likely see 3D and that experience again to, to go on. And same with another example would be gravity. The spatial, uh, the space and the, the sense of where we are in relativeness to things in space really stood out in that film and it really made it part of the, f of the experience of watching that film and to a degree it was much better because of it. So those are examples of where taking on that new technology, 3D in that case, really added to the to the film and the creativity and the, and, 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 and the, the emotional impact of that film. And such is that will most likely be the case with Rec 2020 as well. In the demonstration, for example, some of the example images we saw were of sunsets and other colourful parts of the things that we see in our day-to-day -day life, which we, you know, as people who saw this display, this Rec 2020 demonstration, would have never been have seen the clarity and the rep reproduction of a sunset on a display that accurately as they had in the demonstration. Now that you know that's an important tool. So if you're producing a documentary uh, with fish and other things where colour is a very big part of the experience of seeing those um, animals or sunsets or vistas. 2020 would be worth it, wouldn't it? Because it'll bring you there to the more realistic colours, like you're really there and really seeing that sunset at the top of the, you know, of Mount Everest. That's worth doing. But if it's just going to be a headshots for a couple of documentaries on some dogs or something, no, it's not worth it. So you, these, you know, these grey areas of when we want to jump over to these new technologies and these new advances in, in being able to reproduce these images is again, it's an educational process that we need to use the tools, get experience with the tools, and then know how to best utilize the tools to enhance the quality of our product, of our intent, of the emotional impact. So I thought that was a really interesting uh, educational part and message that came from the presentation. And I think, you know, it is a, you know these are some of the things I hoped or I thought I saw the people who came to the presentation took away with them, uh, you know, to uh, hope that they will discuss this with their friends, discuss what's happening and how it's going to impact them and their, um, their passion for their creative uh, endeavours. Anyway, 
That's James Garden, the Syntech Geek, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye for now.